If you're a property owner or investor who already operates or is interested in building RV and boat storage, there's an easy way to maximize the return on your investment and generate additional profit. It can even help a developer make faster headway through the approvals process. What is it? The addition of solar panels. Don't believe it? Keep watching. We're going to walk you through a proof of concept case study of a project in Oakley, California. Opened in June 2013, the facility was cash flowing in just 18 days. We'll show you how the owners did it and how you, too, can apply this business model to your existing or future storage facility. You'll learn what you need to get started, things to consider during the decision-making process, and how to ultimately achieve success with a solar panel carport installation. Oakley Executive RV and Boat Storage is a proof of concept of a model that we created to derive revenue from both the solar and the shaded parking. So this concept um, calculates the revenue from the solar income from either a feed-in tariff or a net metering project as well as the shaded parking revenue and uh, validates that we were onto something. So we had a model and everyone said to us, oh, all right, let's see you build it. And we built it. And wouldn't you know, within 18 days we were in the black. So not only did it validate the model, but it is a flagship facility of what you can do when you combine solar and shaded parking. Before we dive into the specifics of Oakley Executive RV and Boat Storage, designed, engineered, and built by Baja Construction Company, Let's examine the advantages of building a solar RV and boat storage project. First, it allows you to reduce your tax liability and increase your net operating income. Solar creates a secondary revenue source to bolster your storage rental income, again increasing your NOI. A solar installation allows you to enrich the value of your real estate with a capital improvement that can be depreciated over five years rather than the standard 30. Finally, you can receive a tax credit from the federal government equal to 30% of the costs associated with solar. Now let's get a good look at this amazing project that has proven and continues to validate the value of a solar RV and boat storage investment. Oakley Executive is a flagship installation of solar RV and boat storage in the San Francisco Bay Area. It uses solar canopies to support the production of 1.5 megawatts of solar power while generating revenue from the shaded parking the modules provide. All the power produced is being sold back to the utility, Pacific Gas and Electric Company, or PG&E, on a 20-year fixed-rate contract. The facility is also designed to meet the needs of RV and boat storage customers by providing secure, shaded parking executive services, and amenities to vehicle owners. This gorgeous Class A facility was built atop a former 100-year vineyard of heritage Zinfandel grapes. It is state-of-the-art, including creative design elements and high-quality construction, and conveniently located near recreational and sporting venues, campgrounds, and major highways. In addition to more than 10 acres of secure, shaded parking, the business offers a wealth of customer features and amenities, including angled parking for easy entry and egress, 24-hour video surveillance and security, 24-7 gate access and fully staffed access hours, computerized access gates, a 14-foot perimeter wall, fire hydrants on site, an air compressor, a wash station, a dump station, a propane tank, free ice, a shower, a conference room with free Wi-Fi, computerized account management and online bill pay, trickle charging stations available on select spaces. The stucco and stonework that comprise the exterior of the Oakley Executive Office building, combined with the coordinated accents on the 14-foot perimeter fence and entry gates, create an upscale, club-style appearance enriched by the elegant streetlights lining the driveway. When customers enter the management office, they're greeted by very friendly and trained customer service representatives and immediately get a sense of sophistication from the leather couches, 
Persian rugs, and other decorative appointments. Now that you've got a sense for the quality and style of the facility, let's shift focus to the development and construction process. The layout, design, and engineering were extremely critical in the creation and success of this project, as it includes both solar and non-solar canopies. The goal was to maximize rentable space while erecting canopies that would support the weight of the solar components. About 100,000 square feet of the structures have solar panels on them. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones producing the power that we're selling to the local utility. And those structures have no roof deck on them. And the reason they have no roof deck on them is so that they qualify for the federal tax credit okay. and the accelerated depreciation. What factors do you need to consider when you decide to use solar for the shade rather than the roof decking? Uh, well, the I mean, the, the solar, what you, what you have to do is it, it requires more purlins and it requires actually a, um, a dead load of three pounds per square foot because that's what the panels weigh. And so you have to design that into the structures. Actually, on this project, I, we designed all the structures so that they could take solar in some time in the future. The parking spaces are 13 feet wide and angled at 60 degrees. Perhaps the most important element in the design of this project is the orientation of the canopies, which are positioned to maximize the production of power. The angulation of the roofs, does that have something to do with the solar production? Yeah, on, when, you, when you put in solar, you gotta put a little slope in, because you, you wanna keep the water off the, off the panels. You want it to drain. And we put all these in at a 10 degree angle. Uh, because the problem with if you go 15, which is more optimal, it ends up getting way too high because the minimum clear height we use for RVs is 14 foot. So, and the reason we do that is they build most of the overpasses to 13.6. And so they really can't be higher than that, and not for long anyway. The solar modules are attached directly to the purlins of a fixed, elevated structure specifically engineered to support their weight. See how the solar arrays double as the shade structures under which boats and RVs are parked. The panels weigh three pounds a square foot. Um, and that's the dead weight, so you have to design the structures to take that dead weight. And there has to be a, additional purlins so that you can attach to them because the panels have to be attached um, in a very precise way so that their warranty is good and you don't have any issues with wind. So you don't damage the modules. Right. These arrays generate 1.678 megawatts of DC wholesale power that's fed directly back into the utility grid under PG&E's Small Generator Feed and Tariff Program. This translates into automatic monthly revenue for the facility owner. You'll see details about the solar revenue model a little later. First, let's take a look at some obstacles that could affect the budget of an RV boat or any self-storage project and how a solar component can help to surmount them. In the case of Oakley Executive, the city was not overly excited about the prospect of adding another RV and boat storage facility to the already crowded market in Northern California's Delta region. The owner, therefore, faced a good deal of opposition and several attempts to sidetrack the project. The problem was I didn't do my homework, and um, unfortunately there was no drainage to the property. Uh, the city wanted me to drain the surrounding 90 acres at a cost of a million and a half dollars. They wanted me to put in 500 um, feet of sewer, which would have cost me another half a million bucks and there was no gas or electricity to the property or water. And so I played around with different options of trying to get the city behind me to help me do it. How did Baja prevail over many of these red light details? You guessed it, by adding a solar component to the site design. The city was opposed to a traditional boat RV storage facility 
But once solar was added, the red lights quickly turned to green. I decided to approach the city of Oakley with the idea of doing solar RV and boat storage. And it was like a magic wand. It, uh, all of a sudden from going, from being negative about the project, they decided, oh, this is a great idea. Because I, one of the things I said is they considered themselves the gateway to the Delta. And in part of my presentation, I said, you guys could be the solar gateway to the Delta. And all of a sudden, all the lights went on. And, and they allowed me to put in this retention pond instead of doing a drainage system. They allowed me to do a septic tank instead of sewer. They actually, the water district put in the water for free. So all the, all the, it was like Moses parting the Red Sea. It was all of a sudden everything opened up and everything became easy. The other primary obstacle for the Oakley executive project was financing which was challenging to find for a new project in a fairly depressed community and economy. Again, the solar component saved the day. Once the project secured a 20-year guaranteed revenue stream from the public utility company PG&E, the money from lenders began to flow. Now let's look inside the solar revenue generating machine. First, how does the system itself work? So the panels produce the power in DC, and then all the electricity in DC comes down to this inverter, which in, it converts it to AC. This project is a megawatt and a half, so each one of these inverters are 500 kW, so they're, they're a half a million watts each inverter, and we have three of them. And then all the inverters send the power AC over here to the uh, interconnection and then then the then the power there goes to the um, PG&E power pole that we were very fortunate that was close to the project. In the successful Oakley model, the property owner purchases, installs, owns and operates the photovoltaic system at his storage location contracting with the utility to sell all of the energy produced at a fixed rate, paid monthly for a 20-year period. By entering a feed-in tariff contract with the utility company, the owner creates a bankable annuity that he can take to the bank to secure financing. The solar is in a contract with PG&E. They're paying us 13 cents a watt, and it's over a 20-year time frame on a on a monthly payment uh, process. And so every basically kilowatt or every watt of electricity goes to them and they, uh, they pay us for the power. And uh, it's turned out to be way better than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I had no idea that the amount of power that we're producing and the way it's being paid uh, basically covers all of my debt service. Within 18 days, this project was cash flowing. I, first 18 days, I got a check for $34,000. My payment to the bank was $32,000. So the project was cash flowing from day one. To see and project how much energy the site is and should be producing, the owner can use an online monitoring program like Draker, which is the one used by Oakley Executive RV and Boat Storage. If you, if you sell the power back to your utility, they're going to require a monitoring system. And so we have a Draker system that you can go online and see uh, real time exactly how much power you're producing per inverter, um, you know, if there's any variables, uh, it gives you a ton of information way more than I know how to read, but I, I can tell whether or not it's producing power and how much it's producing. And there's also alarms. If, if for some reason there's a problem, it'll send you an alarm instantaneously. Key metrics make great selling points to storage consumers. So now that you've seen the revenue potential of adding a solar installation to boat and RV storage, 
How do you know if your property is suitable for this kind of operation? And how might it compare to the Oakley Executive Proof of Concept? A good candidate would be uh, someone who owns property in a medium demographic, in other words, middle class and above, of maybe 50, 70,000 average income and above near a uh, large city or on the way to uh, recreation. And from there we can look into two of the criteria that would apply is if there is a large energy need or usage on that property that we could basically offset and or if that particular utility, state, what have you, has a feed-in tariff opportunity. Uh, what we can do is we can help you identify those issues and whether they um, will allow you to pass sort of that first tier. And then we look at other things like interconnection and the viability of, of throwing power into the grid and whether the utility will be able to receive it and other elements that uh, might not be so obvious from the surface. Your property's solar options are based on your ability to secure a reservation from your local utility company for a feed-in tariff or for net metering. The incorporation of solar to a boat RV storage project also opens financial avenues that might not otherwise be available to you. My bank um, has told me that any place in the United States I can get a contract with a utility company and or a AAA creditor for a 20-year contract to sell them power, they will loan us money anywhere in the United States. So the differentiating factor between an RV boat storage facility and a solar RV boat storage mm -hmm. facility is the solar allows you to debt service the entire project and that makes it very comfortable for the bank. They get a 20-year contract with a utility company, guaranteed payments. And so long as they can feel comfortable with that utility company and or that AAA credit uh, business, um, the business risk of starting an RV boat storage facility is minimized. And that's what we found and that's what the bank has reinforced. And because of how we were able to prove it out in this model, they have given us a green light to go find more projects like this. Finally, incorporating solar into your storage project will improve the value of the real estate while creating significant tax advantages. So the tax advantages of building a solar RV and boat storage project, but more specifically a solar project, is that federally, you get a 30% federal tax credit and that tax credit comes right off what you owe Uncle Sam. You should consult with your accountant about how to best use the 30% tax credit and five-year depreciation schedule. If you have a tax liability, you'll like what your CPA has to say about solar. But there's a whole host of ancillary benefits as well. For example, positive public perception, and the general goodwill a green project attracts. The benefits of building a solar project is it makes life easier. It's just no one wants to be in an adversarial relationship with an alter alternative energy project. Everybody wants to be for Mother Earth. Everybody wants to be green. We've been doing carports, which is where we started for 40 years, and people used to ask me, well, what do you do for a living? I do steel carports. They'd go, what? And nowadays they ask, well, what do you do for a living? I build solar carports. And they go, really? <laughs> That's the difference, is, is we are emotionally and politically correct when we build solar projects. I was at a Starbucks the other day and a neighbor came over to me and said, oh my, I just saw your commercial for the solar RV boat storage facility. And he said, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I can guarantee you, if I had a commercial about an RV boat storage facility, there would not have been that same reaction. 
because the solar element makes it really cool, makes it interesting, and makes you want to know more. And uh, we're seeing that, not only with the tenants, but with people interested in building them. It's, it's uh, a wow factor. Storage operators obviously generate revenue by renting parking spaces for boats, RVs, and other vehicles. But they can make even more money when they add solar shade structures. Creating a second revenue source will not only take profit to the next level, but create real tax savings, reduce tax liabilities, and allow accelerated depreciation opportunities. The key? A solid business partner who can help you make the dream a reality. Well, Baja is a good partner because I own it. No, just kidding. Uh, Baja, Baja is a good partner because we've done lots of these. We've done these all over the United States for, I don't know, 30 years. So we have the most knowledge about the structures and we have the best partners as far as solar goes nationwide. So we've probably worked with, I don't know, 50 different solar integrators throughout the United States. And so we can, we're kind of like Angie's List. We can tell you who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Baja's value add, in my opinion, is the <clears throat> way they uh, can design the layouts and optimize solar production. So it's not just about fitting the most mm -hmm. number of spaces in a single project site. It's also orientating the panels and the layout of the canopies so that you can get the best solar production. So they have a great PV optimization tool so that if you give them the site plan, they can come back with not a layout that gives you the most spaces, but a layout that will optimize solar. So, are you interested in generating additional revenue with your boat RV storage investment? Your next step is to reach out to the professionals at Baja Construction and find out if your existing or planned project is a good candidate to make money from the sun. So if you're interested in this, if you liked it, if you think it's going to make some money for you like it has for me, give me a call. I'm Bob. Thank you for your time.